Hello, and welcome to this speed paint. So I've done a couple speed paints before, but this is going to be the first one with my voice. Um, part of the reason for that is I was uh, a little uh, self-conscious to put my voice online, but we'll see how it goes. So this speed paint is for clients in the Camp half Flood AU from the Percy Jackson universe. So I sent out a little poll on Instagram asking what cabins you guys thought they would be in. Um, turns out the poll wasn't so useful because it turns out there was a tie. Which was really surprising because there were over 800 respondents, so what were the odds that both polls would end up in a tie? But I went ahead and picked for you guys. Out of the options I was deciding between, I decided to go with Aphrodite and Ares because I feel like if I went with Poseidon and Hades, they would have been a little bit too much, like there would have been too much comparison with Percy and Nico. So right now I'm in the sketching process. So this is where I like pose the characters and figure out what they're doing. I wanted to make Lance's pose very open so his shoulders are like facing forward. I had a little bit of trouble with his hands, but uh, I just went and switched over to Keith so I'd come back to his hands later. For Keith's pose, he's got this like gruff strongman pose going on. I think he looks super gruff right now, but I made him I made him smiling later. Um, I also I kind of up to his beefiness a little bit, but I mean he is pretty much when he comes off the space whale like that, and I thought it'd be good to play that up for the whole Aries vibe. Um, for Lance, now I'm sketching in his clothes. I feel like he would totally modify the Camp half Flood t-shirt, make it a bit more fashionable. So I had him like cut the sleeves off, you know, sun's out, guns out kind of style. Keith would be super practical though. He wouldn't modify the shirt. He's like, if it fits, it's fine. And just wears it as it is. Uh, I gave him cargo shorts at first, but then I was like, well, he kind of does have that, that edgy, edgy boy style. So gave him some ripped jeans instead. Uh, then I was designing his weapon. I think I only really remembered one one Ares kid from all of the books, Clarice. So I kind of based it off of that. She has this electrified spear. Um, and that's what I, I gave to keep that first because it was the only weapon I remembered. And right now I'm writing a little bit for each one of them because I wanted to do like a character profile with info on each person. Just modifying the sketch, kind of refining it. So I'm refining the sketch so you can see on the shoes and the hands and details on the jeans and his face. Those are like where there are extra details. So I go back on the sketch and make them very clear so it's easier when I get to the line art. Here are some facts I'm writing out. I think I shortened it for the final version, but just coming up with some basic facts, what their powers are and stuff. Uh, I don't think I know of any powers other than Charm Speak for Aphrodite kids, so of course I was going to give him that. For Ares kids, uh, at first I just gave Keith enhanced speed and strength in combat, but then I looked it up and they also have powers for summoning weapons, and I thought that was super cool because that's like how Keith summons his Bayard, especially when he got the black Bayard, the way it like materializes, so I thought it'd be cool if he could do that with his dagger. Yeah, there's a lot of writing there, but I trimmed it down for the final version. And now we're starting line art. So sketching is definitely my favorite part of the drawing process. Uh, flat colors might be my least favorite. Line art is somewhere in between. I like sketching a lot because it's like making something out of nothing from a, from a blank page. Now there's something there. Uh, line art is a close second. It's like kind of cleaning up your sketch, but it's definitely not as fun or creative because the drawing is basically all there. You're just making it nice and clean. Adding in his bracelets and stuff. I remember drawing these socks and then later I was like, I hate these. I need to get rid of them. But when I was lining them, I thought they looked fine. Mm -hmm. 
And now we're moving on to the line art for Keith. And yeah, I changed him so he's smiling and he looks a bit less gruff. Uh, I gave him a lot more beads. I thought it fit with his backstory where he was like orphaned and kind of on his own. It makes sense that he would arrive to camp a lot sooner. Lance has like a big family. Uh, I feel like he would be kept in good care for a while until he would finally come over. So he has a lot less beads. Uh, now I'm doing the line art for the jeans. I used to draw pants as just this like flat blob. Um, and then I looked up and kind of studied how jeans work. Got like the belt loops and the way the buttons are. And now it's a lot more fun to draw. Oh, here you can see me switching his weapon. Um, I remember that I was like, wait, Clarice has a spear, but that doesn't mean Keith has to have one. He would totally have a sword. I like forgot that all other types of weapons existed. So yeah, I gave him a sword instead and that fits him a lot better. Um, yeah, now I'm adding the seams on the jeans. And now we are moving on to flat colors. So first I like kind of messily put down the flat colors just to see how they look like. This makes it really easy. I can just use the fill-in bucket to change colors that I don't like. Just get the general idea of what it would look like. You can see me changing the shirts. Uh, but once I picked colors I like, to go in and make sure it's actually all in the lines. So refining it and making sure everything fits in the lines nicely. Yeah, sometimes it helps to change the background color because like when I started his shoes and socks, they're kind of white and the background was white. It makes it hard to see if you're actually in the lines. Sometimes I do all the colors on different layers and that makes it easier when you're shading and stuff because you can just work on that layer and lock it. But for this piece, I did all the colors on one layer, uh, so I wouldn't have to keep switching between layers. Now we're doing the shading, so I added a gradient to the shirts. Um, I thought that kind of lessened the impact of the bright orange. I think it's kind of funny that they're like, a wilderness camp where the kids are chased by monsters. What kind of shirts should we give them so they can hide from the monsters? And they're like, let's go with bright orange. Uh, now I'm adding some details. It's kind of funny to add ripped jean details. I draw the jeans that's not ripped, and then on top of the jeans, I draw his skin. Just kind of like the opposite instead of underneath the jeans, but it's a lot easier to draw that way. And I'm basically only using default brushes on Procreate. So I use the marker tool for inking. I use- I switch for sketching tools, I just use whatever I'm feeling like for sketching. And for painting in the block colors, you can also just use default tools. Um, they have some nice textures built into Procreate, which is what I used on their jeans to give it that look. Now I'm adding some final details, the shoelaces on both their shoes, uh, the earrings, Lance's braided belt. You can see me slowly building up that braid. And the eyes, they really finish it off so they don't have that blank dead look. For the eyes, I normally have two colors, the dark color on top and the light color on the bottom, and then add a white shine. Oh, now I'm doing the shadows. Uh, for the shadows, I just add a layer on top of everything and set it to multiply mode and pick a color that's like kind of dark. So I normally go with like a dark reddish purple and just add shadows wherever you want. The multiply mode makes it so it's like not actually going to be just dark purple, but instead it kind of takes on the color below it, uh, which is exactly what you want for this kind of shadow effect. Now I'm adding the camp half blood words. Uh, I don't like drawing animals, so it's kind of annoying that they've got a pegasus on it. You can see I kind of gave up at the end. It's just, just a generic four-legged animal with wings at this point. Um, I'm adding the final details. Oh, and there we go. I got rid of those socks that I did not like at the very end. And now I'm adding some lighting effects. So that's me scrolling through all of the effects to get to. I think I ended up with overlay. And using the overlay to add some like sunshine on the back. And as a final detail, 
giving them some magic powers. That was like my visual interpretation of what charm speak might look like. And to show that his dagger can like reform wherever. I also added some lights over there. Now I add the words. To make that text effect, I first wrote it using the text tool in Procreate, and then I traced over it so it looked more handwritten. And yeah, I made it a lot shorter from before because there were way too many words. Simplified it to just the basic info. And I do the same thing for Keith, giving him the letters. Oh, one thing people asked about before is why Lance's name is Sanchez instead of McLean. Um, and that was actually like a fandom last name thing. I think they only released the name McLean pretty far into the series. So for the first couple seasons, we didn't have any confirmed last names for them. So I think there was one fic that was super popular, Dirty Laundry, and it gave him the last name Sanchez. And that basically like became official in fandom for a while until the actual name was released. So like as an homage to that, I gave him that last name. I think I just like it better too. And that's it for the speed paint. 